I'm Maria Olson, and you are listening to the Movie Raid Show. It's time for the movie rain. Tonight's victim is actress Maria Olsen as currently playing Lightning Thief by Percy Jackson as well as The Butcher and countless other films. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for having me today. Is this your current film so far that you're working on? Do you have a, a bunch of others that you would like to share with us? Um, yeah, I'm actually working on quite a few projects right now, but the big news from my side is that one of my films, uh, the feature horror comedy Ashes, was released this week on July the 9th, and people can catch it on iTunes and um, other VOD sites, so I'm hoping it's going to have a strong opening weekend and that everyone's going to enjoy it. Very cool, very cool. So tell us a little bit about The Butcher that you're currently involved in, from more of your home stretch in, in your home comfort area. This one, yeah. The Butcher is, is a horror movie, so I'm very, very comfortable in the genre. I love working in and watching horror, but it seems a really long road from Percy Jackson and the Olympians Lightning Thief to The Butcher. I mean, I shot Percy Jackson, I think, in 2009, which, wow, that's 10 years ago now. Since then, I've pretty much never stopped. I've just bounced from film to film to TV show to film to music video to web series whatever and I have done a huge amount of stuff super proud of all of my films and I'm very very pleased to have gotten to work with Michael Mutatsas on The Butcher very interesting twist almost to his to his origin story of a serial killer and I was with it when it originally was just a short film and now I'm so pleased that he decided to make it into a feature I mean he took the the leap into features I know he's just done shorts up until now but here he is with his first feature and it got into its first festival already even though it's not quite done yet so very exciting and very proud of him yeah it's, it's hitting pretty well in terms of other other areas in terms of like social media and stuff like that everyone's pretty well adjusted to it already it seems like horror has become a lot more acceptable compared to what it has been for the last 10 years you, you've you got like many like very gory type films and a lot of times they're restricted because of the, of the content and so forth but now they're pretty well adjusted and well accepted for what they are now. Yeah, I think that there's a certain kind of horror movies, a wide release horror movies that have made it become more popular, the genre become more popular with everyone. I'm talking about things like the Insidious series, the Conjuring series, the Annabelle series. I think that's just widened the attraction of horror movies for a lot of people. And hopefully those people are going to start watching more, not obscure, but more indie horror maybe and, and older horror because there's a lot of good stuff still coming from the 70s, 80s, 90s, you know, the last century. So, yeah, there's so much to explore and so much to watch. The genre is huge. It's a huge community, but even if people are not hugely into the horror, people are actually still flocking to it because of, of actual of interest and in, of their own lives, and, and they're more acceptable to it now compared to what what has been released. They're more more general interest than anything else. It's it's pretty interesting to see this. Absolutely, it is. I'm in the I Spit in Your Grave franchise, and when the original was released in 1978, it was almost immediately banned in like many, many countries. It got onto the UK's video nasty list, and I think it's still on there, and what, 40 years later? But now that the sequel is out and the series of remakes is out, they just got released, you know, and anybody can pretty much watch them on Amazon or wherever or buy the DVD or Blu-ray. They're definitely not subjected to the same kind of censorship almost that the first one was and I think that's reflective of the change in society's attitude towards horror and what is now deemed acceptable on the big screen. Yeah definitely because everything in life is well there's a lot of horrific things in life but having to censor anything now would be kind of pointless. I I know there's exceptions to where you kind of have to censor certain things like male nudity all female nudity and so forth which is fine. But when it comes to, like, issues of reality, some people go a little bit further than that. I think it's always been, and especially now, a safe genre to investigate things that are not really open to investigation in mainstream genres. I don't know, it just seems to take more risks with, with what it shows, and it's it's accepted for that. And so it can cover a lot more subject matter, things that are generally not discussed in, in, in mainstream genres at all. And I think that's one of the things that I actually enjoy about horror. 
um, it's accepting and it's also interesting and and not normal. Definitely, and that's that's what I love about horror. It's always, it's always something interesting and more uh, more aggressive in some way, and it brings out a lot of, a lot of in people. But when it comes to acting various roles in your career, how do you mold the performance into something different without giving an impression of a predictable character? What I normally do, um, I'm very much attracted to the emotion emotions that are embedded in the character, the emotional journey the character goes on, and once I can identify what what that is within the film, I can tap into it. And that's what makes the characters different because each of them are written to go on a different emotional journey within the story of the film. That does work better with larger roles than the smaller ones, but that's sort of my process. I tap into whatever's going on inside the character's head emotionally and just make them different based on their own journey. And it's very hard to do that too because once you see it on screen, you're like, oh, okay, well, you instantly know what that character is, but at the same time, it's kind of not good in some aspects. You know exactly what they're already about because of how you're already portraying them as a bit when you have to work it with you know inside their head trying to make it a little bit different but still keeping with the story context absolutely and i also try to with the bigger roles that i play i would also try to bring like two competing sides of the character to the fore so that people are, for instance, watching me commit a horrible murder on screen, but also understanding the reasons why I'm doing that. And hopefully, if I do my job well, identifying with me for those reasons. As in, oh, if I were in that situation, maybe I would do that too. Oh, but then that's a horrible thing to do. So I I try to create that conflict in the viewer's mind. That's the sort of thing that I find interesting. And I think that's almost something you can only do in horror really horror and thriller perhaps yeah it's not so much about like performing the best type of scare the best type of of anything into that relation is it's the fact is if you can get this character out there to show the audience that this is something that you can present in a different way without having to basically have the same type of mask on on every single role especially in horror it can be repetitive a lot of times they are in the horror genre but at the same time you can form it into something different of your own i agree um i watch a lot of horror and it's it it gets really easy to predict storylines because as you said a lot of horror is similar and you also see a lot of stock characters as in you see this one guy or girl or whatever and you go oh okay that's that character that that will happen to as in okay um the group of friends we know they're going to all be killed off and we know in which order they're going to be killed off because of how they're portrayed on screen i mean that that's actually an, an interesting thing in itself we were able to recognize okay that guy will be killed first because of the character he's playing and then that one next and then that one next and finally you will have the final girl or final guy definitely stock horror character and I think, yeah, the challenge is for the actor to find something unique and individualistic in each of these characters so as not to make them stock while still going through the same motions that you've seen in a hundred other horror movies. That's definitely a challenge, yeah. yeah self-identification from the actor to the character is, is truly important. And, and oftentimes it can get lost because you're trying to figure out what, what you're going to do with these characters or character, however, whatever is the storyline, especially in the horror genre because there's like so much going on and so much emotion and so much of having to figure out everything at all at the same time within that just one scene within even within 10 seconds um i always divide my roles each two types actually um i divide it up between the humans that i play and then the non-human characters that i play i mean i play vampires and witches and ghosts and a fury and a succubus and all kinds of things and I generally find that those are usually easier to play than humans because humans are just so complex you know when you're the more supernatural kind of character it's easier to just move ahead with a single goal or a single way of getting what you want than it is when you're playing a human character that's just how I always like divide the types in my head And that's how I would approach the different kinds of roles. And of course, one is much more physical than the other as well. The the, uh, non-human characters generally involve another layer of physicality that's not present when you're just playing a a normal person, you know? Yeah, and when you've played so many between 
supporting role and as well as leading role do you think it's best to balance out between lead and support for better security for future roles future films as well yeah i i totally think it is good to have both both kinds of roles on your resume you know as long as the character interests me and it's not something completely out of my the range that i play i will accept a role whether it's being on screen for five seconds will be the lead in a film. And I think it just, it, it helps to show versatility. But of course, I can do that. I am open to doing that because I'm a character actor. If you're a leading lady or a leading man, things are a little bit different for you because then you're really only open to the leading roles and not the supporting roles. Once you've hit character actor status, though, you can pretty much do what you want and you will be fine. But Yes, I do enjoy a nice spread between leading and supporting. Now, with the horror genre that you're most familiar with or have performed most, when it comes to that portion of it, is it more of a uh, personal thing in part for your, from your own life using it within this genre? Do you think it's best for that, or do you think this is more of a different range of acting out the part? It sort of is a different range of acting, actually. With horror... It's more theatrical almost, and I'm talking theater sense, not commercial versus theatrical film. And it's, it seems to be bigger, and the bigger performances are often more accepted in the horror genre than they are in normal romantic comedy or action or adventure or whatever else it is. And I, I come from a theater background, so I come from a place where my performance would be bigger, but I have learned to change that for screen, obviously. But one of the aspects I enjoy of working in horror is sometimes playing characters where the bigger personality on screen, the bigger presence, is needed, and I can bring in all of my theater training when I do something like that. And I think it's just, it's really fun to be able to try out all these different characters within the same genre and to have playing each of them become a valid performance, if you know what I mean. It's it's not just, oh, you're too big, you're overacting, whatever. It's, oh, that was perfect for that specific character because that's just what we wanted. So I think the genre does give actors a more, a, a, a bigger chance of being more versatile in the types of performing they do. And that's just exciting and fun to me. And I've always loved horror. I've watched it since I was a kid. When I started acting in horror, I started watching some of the footage from the first couple things that I did. I realized I had a very, very, very intense on-screen presence. And that, which just happens, you know, you don't, you don't know, you never know what you're going to be like on screen until you actually see yourself. And I just come across as like super creepy and intense. And that sort of shaped my career because I saw that in myself and I was like, you know what, if you want to book roles, then go out for roles that suit you. Don't try to change your innate essence into something that it is not. Just just do what you naturally are. And here I am, being creepy. Do <laughs> you think it's best to let yourself be out of control, let the character control you in some aspects in this particular genre for you? I play a lot of, like, super, super emotional roles where my characters are, like, break down, crying every five seconds sort of thing. And what I try to do is no matter how out of control emotionally the character is, I always try to keep, well, I do actually keep that kernel of control within my mind, as in, I know what I'm doing. I know how to manipulate my emotional state while I'm doing those scenes to the extent that it looks out of control. Just a quick story. There was this one scene that I was shooting in a film called Reunion. I had someone tied up in a bathtub and I was I was threatening them, attacking them with a hammer. And my director told me to, okay, just be out of control. Obviously, don't hurt your scene partner, but just be out of control. And I did. And I managed to smash several tiles in the bathroom by the bath, which we had to replace, which was very, very expensive tile. I think always try to keep a modicum of control because for one thing, a movie set is a dangerous place. But for another thing, you can control what you're doing while you're in control. But if you're out of control, you can't fine tune your performance, if you know what I mean. Oh, I totally agree there. Go ahead and plug in any websites that you would like to, to promote or anything that we can check out right now. 
Oh, sure. Um, for all my stuff, I post quite uh, regularly on my Facebook fan page, which is Maria Olson fan page on Facebook. I also post um, a lot of stuff on Instagram. At the moment, I'm doing a series of compilation or, or combinations of pictures showing how I got into special effects makeup for my different roles. And I post a lot of different kinds of pictures on my Instagram. And I'm also on Twitter, although I'm not really active there a lot because Twitter is like the first one that I forget if I'm on set or anything like that. But I'm totally there and on Instagram. And you can follow me at Maria Olson 66 And that is actress Maria Olson.